He was a burden bearer. He heard something from the Lord and he wrestled with it. Prophets wage a good warfare with words of prophecy. So prophet of God, you don't receive a, a prophecy just for the sake. Jesus. Until that word finds expression and manifestation in the earth, you wage a good warfare with that word. Paul admonishes Timothy says, now wage a good, I, I exhort you, wage a good warfare with the word of prophecy that was spoken upon you when I laid my hands upon you. You don't receive a word just for the, the niceness of how it sounds and the excitement of how it comes. But you are to, to wrestle and to wage a good warfare with that word, using that word until it finds expression. Abraham was qualified as a prophet because he was an intercessor. He understood intercession. One of the things that the Lord was just also highlighting was that we need to understand um, what I'm going to say out there is going to make what I'm saying make sense. Okay? It's going to seem like I'm deviating a bit, but what I'm going to say after is going to make it make sense. We need to understand that regions, territories, and, 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 and places or lands are first conquered in the spirit yes. before they are conquered in the natural. And why is that? It's because you, you find in, in, in regions where the, the, the will of God is not expressed or the plan of God or the intent is not the, the intent of God is not expressed in that place. The reason because of that is, is, is most times because there are certain rulers and principalities that are occupying illegally even. Yes. Illegally. And it will take a righteous man who will stand for that territory in order to overthrow that principality or that ruler yes. that is governing illegally in that place. Yes. And I'm, I'm, I'm sorry to, to bring this up, but I, I have to. You, you're going to ask, what, what, what do I have to do with cities? And you, you're going to understand, I promise you. It's, let's bring it down even to where we are. Yes. The environment you are in. Sure. There's a word of prophecy concerning this, yes. this region. This, yes. this area of the Kibbeh. Yes. On top of that, there's words of prophecy concerning the SCF in this area. Yes. And I want to remind you, because we are not yet seeing what you've yes. spoken. Yes. So I'm, I'm putting this duty and responsibility on you as well. It, it, it was, those words of prophecy weren't spoken just for the sake. But they were spoken so that we could wage a good warfare and we could labor in prayer until we see what was spoken concerning the SCF, PSCF in particular at UK, the Lake Peter Amen. Amen. In 2022, let me remind you, I can't remember whether it was during prayer or a service, but Prophet Falada spoke and released a word, something that he saw that the Lord was showing concerning the SCF and, and institutions of higher learning. Yeah. That yeah. he sees revival fire yes. breaking forth here. Yes. Yes. Last year, during my term of office, I think it was during the, the, the first semester revival, Pastor MP Shady had come to minister and he covered the prophet. When we were ushering them out, he spoke a similar word. We see the Lord is showing him that he is, that the Lord is saying he's giving PSCF influence on campus. That the SCF is, 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 is to grow and have such impact that it finds even favor in the administration and the governance of the school. And can we agree that we have not seen that yet? Can we agree that that which has been spoken by the Lord has not yet found expression? Therefore we can't relax. We can't be content. 
Yes, we are we are seeing the work that the Lord is doing. Yes, we are grateful for the work that the Lord has been doing. But but there's more. Oh yes. There's more, and we are the ones who are to contend for it as his prophets in this place. God never speaks in vain, brother, and I need us to understand that. He speaks because he intends to do, but he needs partnership with a man in the earth. And we are that man. He needs partnership with you as an intercessor, with you as a prophet who has heard the word of the Lord. I could forgive you before now. I, would, I, I didn't know such words. But now you have heard the words. Therefore, a responsibility and a burden is upon you concerning the SCF you belong to. And you, should, you, you shouldn't rest until you see that. I'm no longer in Peter Mark's break, but I can safely say that that word still haunts me even now. Because I heard it. And I know that God didn't speak it just for me to hear and leave it like that. We'll sit down. There's a responsibility on my end. I'm to stand on behalf of the students here at UKZN, on behalf of the SCF. And continually remind God, Lord, you said. Lord, you said. Lord, you revealed. We have we are not seeing it yet. We haven't seen it. We have not. Second thing that qualified Abraham as a prophet of God is that he was one who knew the voice of God. And he was a friend of God. Abraham knew the voice of God and he was a friend of God. We know the whole story of God calling Abraham to leave his country and his father's house to a foreign land that he knew not of. And when Abraham heard that, he did not resist. But he heard, he heeded, and he obeyed the voice of the Lord. Even though when he was, imagine a person coming to you, they say, Eti, leave all you know, all that you are familiar with, leave your security and go to somewhere that he doesn't even give the specifics of. Eti, go to where I will show you. He doesn't say where it is, he says, I will show you as you go. And Abraham didn't resist. He had an inheritance in his father's house. God said, leave that. He knew people in his father's house. God said, leave them. And follow me where I am leading you. Go to where I am showing you, where I am calling you to. And he obeyed and heeded the voice of God. Scripture also says that Abraham was a friend of God. Prophets are people who are obedient to the voice of God, Lord Jesus. but it's, then, it's also the nature of prophets to be friends of God. God establishes trust relationships with his prophets. God wants to establish a trust relationship with you, but it takes obeying him. It takes following him with reverence. It takes drawing nigh unto him. And scripture says he will draw nigh unto you. Prophets are friends of God. We will not read these scriptures, but they basically show us where the scripture says Abraham was a friend of God, or God called Abraham his friend. It's found in the book of Isaiah chapter 41, verse 8, as well as the book of James chapter 2, verse 23. The third point, God revealed his plans and his secrets to Abraham. God revealed his intentions and the hidden things that he was planning to do, especially as it relates to earth. What God was intending to do in the earth, he would confide in Abraham concerning the Lord was able to lay his heart bare before Abraham. He, he, he goes to him and says, Shall I hide this thing that I'm yet to do from Abraham, my friend? 
Abraham my friend. He has already established that he's going to do it as God. But he says, I'm going to tell my friend first. I'm going to confide in Abraham. I trust him. I can, I can open my heart up to him. And such is the nature of prophets. Such is the nature of prophets. The Lord is able to lay his heart barely before you. He's open to, he's able to confide in you. I want us to read two scriptures quickly. The first is found in the book of Amos, chapter 3, verse 6 to 8. Amos, chapter 3, verse 6 to 8. And it reads as follows. Shall a trumpet be blown in the city, and the people not be alarmed and afraid? Shall misfortune or evil occur as punishment, and the Lord has not caused it? Surely the Lord God will do nothing without revealing his secret to his servants, the prophets. I want us to highlight that word, surely. He says, surely he does nothing or he will not do anything without revealing his secret, his hidden things to his servants, the prophets. The lion has roared, who will not fear? The Lord God has spoken, who can but prophesy? Psalm 25 verse 14. Psalm 25 verse 14. Verse 14, the secret of the Lord have they who fear, who revere and worship him. And he will show them his covenant and reveal to them its deep inner meaning. I don't want to that, that specific verse in, in the NLT. Verse 14, Psalm 25 verse 14. Yes. Okay, that's fine. It's okay. So I, I was I was challenged by these scriptures, honestly. The Lord says, surely. A sure thing is, is, is something that is that there's no shadow of doubt about it. The Lord is certain about it. He says, Surely he will do nothing without first revealing it to his servants, the prophets. So I was like, no, we should be concerned.